Hello there. So after reflecting on my last relationship over the past month or so, I've realized that there were some deep issues in the relationship that really um, made it suffer and ultimately, ultimately led to its demise. And one of those things that I'll talk about today in a short video clip is codependency. So I never really thought of myself as a codependent person, you know, I've always been fairly independent and self-sufficient, but for some reason or, reason or other, my ex and I, um, after being together for a while and after living together for a while, we sort of entered into this codependent kind of thing, and I don't think either of us realized it, neither of us intended it, it just happened somehow. And um, basically what happened was, you know, we sort of got, we fell into a rut, we started taking each other for granted to an extent, but we also at the same time got like really comfortable with each other and um, and started to like depend on each other for certain things. Like I feel like at times I would feel unhappy and part of me would blame him the way he was treating me for my unhappiness, like as if he were responsible for my happiness, which is completely ridiculous. <laughs> and I write about this stuff all the time. So it's, it was kind of surprising to me when I realized that I was putting at least some of my happiness and well-being into his hands at times. So, I mean, if you do that in any relationship, whether it's a friendship, with a parent, with a child, or with a romantic partner, that's never going to be a good or healthy thing. Because when it comes down to it, you are the only person responsible for your happiness. You are the only person responsible for your well-being. Um, I mean, there's... The exception to that is when you're a child and you obviously need your parents to do certain things for you. Um, you can't meet your own basic needs and whatnot, um, or even emotional needs. Parents help with that. But as you grow, you know, you sort of become less reliant on your parents and um, more self-reliant, or at least that's the way it should go. But anyway, in a romantic relationship, um, really what it needs to be is two healthy, confident, happy individuals in their center coming together not because they feel like they need a partner to be happy not that not because they think they need a partner to be loved or to feel lovable or to feel worthy or good but because you know they they feel great on their own but they're just looking to enhance their life with with some romance with some intimacy with some romantic love you know and there's nothing wrong with that and it's a beautiful thing when you're coming from that healthy space but the problem is most of us do not enter into dating or relationships from that healthy space. Most of us enter into it from a place of neediness or a place of feeling less than. Um, a lot of us have hang-ups about ourselves, don't love ourselves, and therefore are looking to everyone else to try to make us feel loved. But the problem is everybody in the world can love you to the... <laughs> like infinitely, but if we don't love ourselves, we're not going to feel it. We're not going to feel that love from anyone. You know, it's it would never be enough. So that's that's one of my lessons, that it's just, it's so crucial if you're entering into a relationship to feel completely happy, content, loved and lovable on your own before you try to enter into something with somebody. Um, and another another way that um, that I feel like I had some codependent tendencies was like, part of me did feel like I needed him, you know, I, like, not just needed his love, but, like, I needed his support, like, his emotional support, and I needed him, like, to have my back and to help motivate me and to help me, like, believe in myself. But that, too, you know, you got to be able to do for yourself. Um, like, if there's something in your heart that you want to do and you're, and you have opposition around you, you can't let that stop you, you know? you got to let your heart be your guidepost. You got to let your heart be your compass and lead you to what it is that you desire. You can't uh, you can't place that responsibility in anyone else's hands. It just uh, it doesn't work. It, it's not sustainable. So that that was a big mistake on my part, you know. And I guess it stemmed from not believing in myself enough, not loving myself enough, believing I needed someone else to do that for me or at least to help me get there. But now I realize that's nonsense, and I can do that on my own. And, you know, it's, it's great to have a partner um, who expresses love and who supports you and stuff. That's awesome. But you can't be in a space of needing that or it's just not going to be a good thing. And it's ultimately probably it's either going to lead to big issues or it's going to lead to your demise.
the relationship's demise. And another aspect of codependency that I realized was putting my ex's needs before my own. And I think we women will often do that in relationships, you know? We're very empathetic, many of us, and we often will put our partner's needs and desires and wants above our own. We sometimes don't even realize we're doing it. You know, we, we can feel other people's needs and desires as if they're our own, and it gets confusing, and sometimes it's hard to separate what I want and what he wants, or it was in the past anyway. Um, so, ultimately, I thought that would be helping the relationship. <laughs> I mean, I, I was mostly doing it subconsciously, but I would catch myself at times. But then I'd be like, well, it's okay, you know, today you wanted to go writing, but instead you're going to spend some time with him doing whatever. And um, even though your heart wants you to write, you know what, you know, for the relationship, you should just do this thing with him anyway. And, uh, and besides, you want him to feel loved and worthy and whatever. But um, in the end, I can see that was sabotage, not only for myself, but for the relationship. We each need to be each person in a partnership needs to be meeting their own needs. You need to be coming from a full, whole place in order to make a relationship work, in order to be in a healthy partnership. So I'm going to take these lessons with me into the future, and I'm already starting to use them, and it's been great. And I hope that you'll do a little reflection on your own relationships to see if maybe you have any patterns of codependence in there. And I'll be doing more videos soon on this topic and related topics, and I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you next time. Love and light.